Okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, so we don't have to, too many people uh, since the, the participants don't see the the number of people who is connected, uh, we will keep informed. We are 11 people online at this moment. Uh, we will update the information to you um, from time to time. Um, so the, um, uh, the 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 reason for this uh, for for this call is to discuss uh, openly with the community, with interested people, some uh, proposals uh, for implementing concrete changes in the in, in like IGF. Uh, Cesar, can you move the, the, the next slide, please? Okay. So this is a process that started last year. There, uh, there was a, an open consultation process that uh, I led by me in uh, in between May and August uh, 2019. We presented the results of the of the process in uh, in La Paz uh, during the LAC IGF 2019. And after that, the, the, the program committee has worked on some uh, proposals that were presented during the, the LAC uh, meeting in, uh, in, in IGF. And, and this year we, uh, we were asked, we were tasked by the, the program committee, Carolina and myself, uh, to, to work on some, uh, on some concrete uh, proposals based on the, on the previous uh, open consultation and the proposal from the program committee. And so we launched a, a survey. Um, somebody's asking, uh, Aroha, yes. Uh, Aroha is asking okay. for the meeting okay. password, yes. Um, and so the, um, uh, we we were tasked to present some uh, some concrete as, as I said some uh, concrete proposals and and we elaborated a survey we launched a survey that uh, was open for one month in May uh, that was based on on, on concrete uh, concepts so more uh, focused uh, survey um, based on the, on all of that. Uh, we prepare some uh, some suggestions to implement as soon as possible in in the LAC IGF. Some of them could be introduced this year for the virtual LAC IGF. I guess that you know that this year the meeting will be held on online, as many other meetings around the world, and uh, and some other changes. Uh, we could see the the result of the impact of the changes in for 2021. So next slide, please. Um, Please, and next, next one, we already covered that. So about the survey, that it was the last step in this process. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, uh, as I say, it was open in May. Uh, mm -hmm. There were uh, 111 participants who responded completely to the survey. There were uh, um, other 30, 40 people who participated, but didn't complete all the, the, the answers. Uh, this is, uh, is, is very interesting that 63% of the respondents uh, were between 40 and 59 years old. And this is not a minor thing because it shows the, the average of the, the, the people that we are working with, the people that is participating in this community. And the, 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 the youth is not, uh, is not a high percentage in the, in, in the community of Laka Jeff. That is something to keep in mind and we will come back to this at the end of the presentation. And 69% of the responses come from civil society and the technical community. So the participation from governments and private sector is lower. 65% of responses uh, were provided by men. So we could be positive and say that 35% of the responses were provided by women, but mm -hmm. shows clearly that the participation of men is much uh, bigger than, than women. This is also another thing to, to keep in mind. And uh, 63% of responses come from South America, 16 from Mexico and Central America, and 11 from the Caribbean. That also is, uh, is very consistent with the uh, perception of most of people that the, 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 the participants are, are mainly from, from South America. Next slide, please. And so, as I say, that the, the, the idea of this presentation, and we will be uh, short, uh, and this is to present some of the conclusions and the uh, and concrete proposals. So next one, please. So one of the of the areas that uh, were covered uh, is the intersectional work. 
this is something that came up during the open consultation last year. Uh, it was uh, present in the, in the conclusions of the program committee and also was one of the, the issues that were, uh, uh, was surveyed in, in, in this uh, uh, last survey. And there is a broad support to the implementation of intersectional work and also broad support that the like IGF is not longer exclusively focused on the annual meeting. 86% uh, of the participants express that the implementation of intersectional work is important or very important. That I think that is, uh, is very clear, this majority that, that we are talking about. And the result is well aligned with the conclusions of the open consultation and the program committee. So it's time to move forward. So we have uh, enough evidence that this is something that we should do. So this is the first proposal that we make to the community and to the program committee is that uh, in this year, the program committee define um, some uh, uh, priority issues and create, uh, launch the creation of a working group on, on those priority issues. We recommend that three is, the, uh, is a reasonable number of, uh, of working groups that we could uh, create uh, this year. So there are some tasks uh, for the committee on this. Is, uh, the committee should uh, select the topics uh, to elaborate the working group procedures. Those procedures should include the definition of objectives, how to select the, 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 the leaders of the working group, people who uh, should be responsible to convene the working group, to prepare the report, to submit the reports, to accomplish the deadlines. What are the, the, the formats uh, for the work of the, of the working group? What are the, the expected outcomes? What are we as, uh, expecting from the working groups? Just uh, the, the information about the work of the group or uh, recommendations, what kind of recommendations? So this is something that should be part of the procedures. Deadlines as uh, where, when the, the, the working groups uh, should accomplish each of the, uh, of the steps in the, in the process and the procedures and also the, 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 the program committee should work on uh, okay, uh, I think that's uh, we have to remove one person. Um, uh, I don't know, Cesar, you, can you deal with that? Thank you. Well, okay. okay. Can anybody take care of that? Okay, I will continue. Um, the and so also that's uh, now we are proposing that the, the, the program committee take the responsibility of kicking off this process, selecting three, uh, three issues, uh, topics, but also we have to define the procedures of uh, how those uh, priority topics uh, will be uh, identified and selected for following years. So this is the first proposal. So uh, Carolina, next, uh, next, uh, um, next slide please. So um, one of the issues that the survey uh, addressed uh, was, and, and uh, the, the consultation last year was, uh, what are the main objectives of the LAC IGF? So we've seen a process that has already uh, been developing for over uh, a decade. And, um, and the, the idea that its, it's uh, mission, scope, objectives should be addressed in this consultation, of, considering that we are looking forward to a, to revamping and uh, revigorating the process uh, was really much part of it. It took a lot of our um, internal conversations uh, during these months with the, with the program committee and, and how to address this uh, uh, adequately in the survey so that uh, respondents could actually uh, develop their ideas about what is actually the main mission and, and objective of, of uh, the LAC IGF. So um, we, we found that there is still a consistent broad support for the LAC IGF to continue uh, as a venue for, uh, as an open venue for an open bottom-up discussion, uh, a multi-stakeholder of course, um, addressing different issues that are um, related with the uh, agenda setting process of internal governance in uh, LAC. Um, so, the, the traditional scope and objective of, of the LAC IGF, we, we found that it, it still has um, uh, this broad consensus and support to maintain this uh, objective, but there's also a significant support to the production of some sort of tangible results coming out of the LAC IGF. And this is uh, very important because um, as you are, m m might well be aware, um, 
uh, IGF forums, the global, the nationals, the regionals, in general, we are discussing uh, um, the, the format of forums that do not have any kind of binding um, recommendations as such. But we are seeing that there is a, a need for some uh, stakeholder groups in particular to have some more, uh, not just tangible outcomes, but also um, some, uh, some idea that, uh, that some recommendation that has a little bit more teeth. I mean, we're not talking about any kind of binding instruments or documents, but a little bit more teeth coming out of this uh, space. So, um, and we saw that this is not a consistent, consistent view amongst the different stakeholder groups. So um, we, we realized that uh, the pushing forward the idea that maybe a LAC IGF that is now changing its, uh, its objective to produce some tangible results and uh, um, might not be considered uh, adequate for all the community. So we, we try to address this in a proposal that is the, the wording that you see in proposal number two to establish uh, as one objective of LAC IGF the achievement of um, general high level agreements in those topics for, for which the working groups uh, had been created. So in the first proposal, we are saying uh, that yes, we need to move forward with, uh, with uh, working groups that will address the high priority topics that the program committee uh, is uh, looking uh, to establish. And then we say, okay, we need to come forward with a proposal that establishes some high level general agreements for those topics in uh, the LAC IGF process, which is, does not only mean that it is at the meeting, but it is as a process as such, right? And so uh, for this, we task the committee to elaborate and propose procedures to determine agreements and procedures to validate them uh, internally and probably with the community as well. So next slide, please. Okay, so other other point in the, that uh, had has been a part of the discussions since last year is the um, the opportunity or not to uh, to organize a high level event um, together with the with the annual meeting of the LAG IGF and 89 percent of the people responded that a high level meeting as part of the agenda would be relevant or very relevant. I think it's again the the, the numbers uh, shows uh, by themselves that the, this is. Uh, something that gets uh, enough support. Um, is uh, uh, again, the, the result on, of uh, the survey in this uh, question is consistent with the outcomes of the 2019 consultation and also with the proposal that were, was elaborated by the program committee. As uh, we, we surveyed also about the, uh, the characteristics of the high level event, uh, it's clear that people is in favor of uh, having something organizing a high level event, but uh, as, as open as possible. And we will work on that in there. So the, the concrete proposal here is that we start organizing a high level session at the last day of the annual event of the LAG HF that we start in 2021. And that high level session will be organized in, collab in collaboration with the government of the host country. And also if possible with, uh, with uh, CEPAL, ECLAC, and specifically with the program ELAC, that is the, the program that leads, deals with the, with the information society you know, related matters. Um, the participation in the high level uh, session could be based on the following criteria. So considering this uh, claim that, the, that's, uh, that we organize a high level event, so by definition it's high level, but, uh, but on, the, on the other hand, uh, keeping it uh, as uh, open as possible, so, so we, what we propose as a criteria uh, to be considered is that the, that the participation is by invitations sent uh, by organizers uh, to governments and to organizations that are part of the ecosystem. So formal organizations from all stakeholder groups. The, the, in fact, the invitation to governments could be uh, sent in, uh, in conjunction with the, with the uh, local government or with CEPAL if uh, that's the case but also that we have also the individual registrations to complete so you could participate or either um, on behalf of a, of a government or a formal organization or as an individual. The objective of this meeting would be to discuss the conclusions of the LAC IGF. So we would have 
uh, a high level event at the, the last day of the, of the annual meeting of Black IGF, where we will uh, discuss the, the conclusions of the LAC IGF, the annual meeting, but also the conclusions of the working groups as uh, summarizing the, the, all the, 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 the work, the annual work. And so what are the tasks that are involved with this recommendation is the, the committee should document the characteristics of the, the high level session and the, the program committee should also start conversations with CEPAL and with the government of the uh, um, 2021 uh, host country as uh, when it's decided. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if, uh, if there is already a decision on the, on the venue for, la for next year. And as a transition, uh, we propose to organize a high-level roundtable at the closing of the LAC IGF uh, uh, virtual meeting in 2020. So we can uh, take some steps uh, um, um, forward and uh, toward the, the, the implementation of this high-level session next year. So next one. Back to you, Carolina. Thank you, Raul. So, um, one of the ideas that the program committee had tested in the um, presentation at the IGF in Berlin last November was uh, the creation of a workshop selection committee. Um, and this would be a specific function uh, that is um, subdivided. I mean, nowadays we have a program committee that is uh, also. Um, developing the, the selection procedures and actually doing this work. And 90% um, of, the, of the respondents uh, of the survey considered the, the creation of this specifically dedicated committee to workshop selection as a, as a very relevant or uh, relevant or very relevant um, initiative and uh, which, which is also part of, of the findings from uh, last year's uh, work conducted by, by Raul uh, regarding the, the necessity to, the need to increase uh, transparency and, and openness in the selection process of um, themes uh, and, um, and panels and, and sessions uh, in, in the uh, LAC IGF. So um, this is a concrete proposal to, to implement this uh, selection committee. And as part of the tasks that uh, we are uh, envisaging that the program committee should develop in the near future is to document the functions of this selection committee and the different roles uh, of the program committee. Now that th this is, will be a, a separate function from the program committee and uh, define the forms of selection and procedures uh, on so as to uh, assist in the, in the instrumentation of, of the work of the selection committee and, and its fast implementation. Next slide, please. Just uh, uh, as, as I promised uh, to, to keep uh, people informed about the participation in this meeting, um, so at this moment we are 17 people online. Um, okay, um, next uh, recommendation is about the selection of committee members, and this is a very sensitive issue uh, because we are now speaking about a new, a new committee that is the workshop selection committee, and we have the, the program committee that is, is being proposed to change the name of the, the program committee and to, uh, that this is part of the, of the proposals that came from the program committee to change the name of that committee uh, to um, the multi-stakeholder committee. Uh, so, if those uh, proposals are implemented, we will have two committees. So, the, one of the things that have been a part of the, of the discussions and part of the concerns that have been expressed by many people is that the, uh, is how people are selected to be part of those committees. So, we are taking the, the both committees together. Uh, um, eventually, if, uh, if more committees are, are created, I think that the, 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 the rules uh, could be similar or at least based on those that we are proposing now. The majority of the participants in the process, 75% are in favor of the idea that each stakeholder group select their appointees, their, their appointees, please, sorry, uh, to the committees through their own procedures. So it's uh, the uh, people don't think that uh, we should um, set uh, um, central procedures that each stakeholder group should respect. So. Uh, private sector, technical community, governments, each of the groups uh, can select the people by their own rules. Uh, but, the, but also there is a claim to much more transparency on the, on the, on the, on the processes and, and, and how people can become involved. 
this already came up in the consultation last year, and it has been it has remained as one of the the uh, of the uh, things that uh, pop up all, all the time. So the the concrete proposal, the proposal number five, is uh, defined as soon as possible the basic requirements of transparency and openness that that each stakeholder group should accomplish in the election of the members of the committees. The implementation of those requirements should be immediate. So this is something that we can implement immediately. And the, the information about the work of the stakeholder group is a, is a scare. Uh, there is no clear information about how to become involved. So one question that's came up many times is, uh, okay, how can I become part of the program committee? Uh, so who I should talk with in order to, to express my, my, um, my willingness to, to serve in, in those positions. So then is a possible implementation of the proposal could be as follows. That the program committee could ask uh, two people from each stakeholder group, uh, so ask them to work in the formalization of their respective constituencies. In a given time frame. So for example, uh, they have uh, 15 days, one month, whatever, they should submit and publish they should communicate, but also at the same time make it uh, public, the following information. Who, who are the organizations and members that are already signing in as part of that constituency or stakeholder group? Um, what are the rules for the election of the representatives? They will have a, a closed election in a, in a gathering or they will have a, a direct elections or whatever but they should communicate what are the procedures that they will implement. And also, what are the criteria that should be an open and public criteria as, uh, for acceptance of new members? So the, I, if I represent a company or a, or a chamber of uh, private companies and I want to be an active member of the, the private sector group, so I should know how to do that. How, how can I be accepted as part of, uh, of that interest group. And, and also, who are the, the point of contacts of each stakeholder group? So that's uh, once that's, that's, that this information is public and, and everything is, uh, is available for everybody, so that uh, we could consider that the work of the program committee is done on this and, and each stakeholder group is able to self-organize themselves and, and and elect the, the representatives and their, their, their own uh, procedures. Back to you, Carolina. Thank you. So now, uh, next slide, please. So now we are uh, heading uh, towards the last uh, proposal. Um, so the, there was another question in the survey uh, related with the current uh, structure of uh, the functions, uh, the governance of the LAG IGF in, um, and how the secretariat functions are being um, developed and whether we should address some changes. And there were two thirds of responses that proposed that the secretariat should have a more executive role. Um, and um, this is in line with uh, some of the recommendations and uh, comments that came uh, in last year's um, uh, study. Um, and the option that uh, received the greatest support included the separation between the operational functions and the executive uh, political ones. So um, having a more executive uh, secretariat is, uh, is really a, a strong, um, consistent finding since last year. Uh, it also came out in some comments as well. Uh, the qualitative feedback received uh, of the survey is something that we haven't addressed uh, now uh, until now, but uh, actually there were many, many comments uh, that, that came out uh, of the survey and, and uh, this was also supported uh, qualitatively. And so we are proposing two, uh, two measures as part of this proposal number six, addressing the secretariat, which is to implement in the short term, the creation of an executive secretariat that reports directly to the program committee, which uh, according to the proposal that the, multi, that the current program committee formulated in November at the IGF in Berlin, this uh, would, uh, program committee would be called the multi-stakeholder committee in the future. That's why we are using this uh, name now. 
um, and the executive secretariat will be responsible for the implementation of the decisions of the multi-stakeholder committee and would act as the connection between this multi-stakeholder committee and an operational logistical secretariat. So um, this we believe is, um, is, would, uh, is, a, is a radical improvement uh, towards uh, achieving a, a more um, sustainable, uh, present, uh, like IGF, and particularly with the demands for interse intercessional work, uh, that is uh, clearly one of the main uh, components that comes out uh, as, a, as, an, as a demand uh, to, to increase this, this presence and, its, and the relevance of the LAC IGF in IG discussions in the region. So we are proposing that the executive secretariat starts as a very, uh, light uh, secretariat, one or two people, max, and uh, in, in initially, I mean, with probably with some volunteer or semi-volunteer work, um, a funding model would need to be defined. This is something that we are not addressing. It's out of scope of, of this work. Uh, but uh, initially, the secretariat could contribute towards uh, uh, finding the, the right uh, funding avenues uh, to support this work. So the tasks that we are uh, seeing here is uh, that the committee should define uh, the terms of reference for an executive secretariat and to implement the process to select the people uh, in this role. So this is the end of the proposals and we have in the next slide a, a compendium a, a summary of the, whole, of the proposals in the next slide, please. Um, which we might leave uh, for, for comments. Uh, and, and Q&A, uh, but then in the next slide, maybe Raul, you would like to comment on the final comments that we would like to add as part of the wrapping up okay, of the we, presentation. We have already two questions. We will go very quickly to those uh, questions. But okay. uh, yes, uh, this is the summary of the proposals. Uh, you have a few seconds to read it. And, and we will move to the next one for our final comments. That's uh, so shortly is the, the the creation of the working groups uh, to establish the, the what's the objective of LAC IGF, that is uh, to reach uh, high level agreements and the in some topics to organize the high level session to start this year with a with a high level roundtable to implement the workshop selection committee as uh, how to select the how to organize the, the the constituencies initially in order to allow them to elect uh, in more with more transparency and openness the, the representatives to different committees. And lastly, the, uh, the, the implementation of the executive secretariat that could be a volunteer work or semi-volunteer at the beginning. There were many other things that we wanted to address, but uh, we considered and we will... Can, can we move to the next uh, slide, please? Um, the... So the, the, these uh, this final comments, uh, so the, the, I want to just to, 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 to mention that the, 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 uh, uh, those uh, proposals were prepared in the, something that uh, could cover all the different uh, access uh, topics uh, where we received comments. And, and we are proposing things that can have some impact in the, in the short term. And uh, since uh, that's the, the changes and the implementation of the changes uh, require energy, so we wanted to to keep the, the recommendations uh, limited to a, a, um, a short uh, number, a small number of recommendations. And uh, but and it's one of the proposals that uh, that came up from the program committee was the implementation of the successful stories and so to organize uh, to collect successful stories stories of uh, successfully implement, implementation of policies on given topics on uh, some countries that could be discussed during the, the annual event. Um, we didn't uh, uh, include that in the, in the recommendations because what I said before, that uh, we wanted to, to, re to keep the, the number of recommendations in a short number. But this is something that uh, for sure we want to, we, we have to consider uh, probably for the next year. Um, and last, um, Slide, please. And the, this is something I, I, I say before that uh, we would come back to the, to the issue of the participation. We saw in the first slide that the, most of the participants are men, are between uh, 40 and 59 years old. Most of the people come from South America. Those are things that we have to address. We have to work on increasing diversity and in, to reflect the diversity 
of the community in the, in the different committees and in the, in the workshop selection and uh, everywhere. Uh, and this is something that we will include some recommendations to the program committee on that. And this is something that we uh, will deserve more work on, on that. Coming to the to the questions, I uh, I saw uh, is uh, one question from uh, Deidre at the beginning. Uh, is uh, the answer the short answer is no. Uh, Deidre uh, is asking if there is. Uh, let me see here in the chat room. Uh, she asks, do the stakeholder groups have any formal existing currently? The short answer is no. So the, we know who are the, the, the more relevant or more uh, representative people from different stakeholder groups. So if we want to talk to somebody, we know how to be in touch with them, but, uh, but there is not a formal existence of the, of, of the groups. And the other, um, the second, uh, Rodrigo, that's uh, Rodrigo proposes a, a more uh, formal uh, link between the, the regional IGF and the national IGFs. I, I think that uh, the answer is yes. Uh, in my view, and I, I will uh, pass the, the floor to Carolina for, to know her uh, answer on this, but uh, I think that we need a, a more, um, a stronger secretariat and a more formal uh, committees in order to address this issue. I think that this should be an objective probably for next year to have to look, but we need, as, a, as I said before, we need also to have liaisons with the youth IGF and other initiatives. So this is a more complex thing. So I, this should be one, one objective, midterm objective probably, to, to have a more formal and a strong links with the national IGFs and other groups that have their own initiatives. But uh, I, I think that we are give, uh, taking the steps, the previous steps that uh, will uh, allow us to have enough energy and the, the, the power to address those things. Uh, Carolina, do you want to add anything on the first two questions? Or? Yes, so um, I, I, I'm not able to find Deirdre's question. So um, I'm, I'm, I don't know why. It's in why. the chat room. Okay. Um, um, I'm, I was looking at the chat room. Okay, do the stakeholder groups? Okay, I'm sorry. I was uh, have any formal existence currently. Um, you know, I, I think I don't have any more comments other than the ones you've already mentioned, uh, Raúl, in in that respect. Um, and um, I I do think um, coming to the the other question about the NRIs uh, that uh, indeed I mean this is some of the. Um, uh, diversity component that we were um, looking at in this uh, last slide. I mean, we are uh, aware that there are national communities who, who are or already participating uh, vocally in, in the global IGF and, and we have already devoted space uh, in previous LAC like, IGF editions to, uh, to uh, the NRIs as such and, and uh, agree that this is a very important bridge to, to build with communities that are alive and that need uh, uh, a space as well in, in the regional forum, but it's not something that we are uh, addressing openly and squarely in, in the proposal now. Yes, um, there is also a comment from uh, Jacqueline. We go now to your questions, uh, but um, mm -hmm. there is a comment from Paola in, uh, Paola, yes. in, in the chat room. Uh, so yes, uh, yes. Uh, in, in fact, uh, Carolina and myself, we were considering to propose, to make a, a concrete proposal to include a kind of liaison, pro probably at the level of the multi-stakeholder committee to include a liaison to the, uh, to the youth IGF. Uh, but uh, we, we didn't do that because uh, we should consider also other, uh, other th aspects like uh, the ones that are, are being proposed by Rodrigo. But also we have the, the gender as, uh, initiatives and other initiatives yeah. could be other ones, could be uh, um, an IGF, uh, a regional IGF focused on disability people or there, there could be other, other initiatives uh, with other um, communities. So we need to, to implement uh, mechanisms that uh, are it's, uh, workable for everybody. But yes, this is something that's, that uh, I think should be one of the objectives for 2021. Let's uh, try to take some baby steps. And, and uh, Deidre, you came back. Do you want to speak, Deidre? I think yes. that's... that's uh, that that, that will be... That, can... that, yes. 
you can give you the floor. Is uh, would you be? Can you speak? Because sometimes people can't. So as so while we uh, wait for Deidre's uh, answer, if uh, she can speak, let's go to Jacqueline's, uh, Jacqueline's. Uh, proposal one. Committee should select the topics in consultation with the community. I think that you are referring to. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, committee should select the topics in consultation with the community. Bottom up. Are, yes. Of course. That I think everything is done with the community. That, that should be okay. Thank you. We will add that to the to the wording. I think yes. Um, yeah. This is also valuable because it's. I mean, this is uh, a practice these days, and it's definitely something that should be maintained. <laughs> so. Um, you want to address the next one? Um, Yes. Also from Jacqueline, proposal five. Yes. So stakeholder groups uh, usually use their own rules, uh, says Jackie. But uh, those rules must include op openness to all potential members of the group. They cannot exclude members arbitrarily. For example, they cannot demand language, culture, country, etc. Maybe the committee should put compulsory values that the rules must subscribe to these ideas. Yes. I. W this is uh, again. Thank you for the input. Um, this, these are some baseline considerations that uh, we will definitely include. Uh, as part of the um, uh, proposals as, and tasks for the program committee to when they frame the proposal uh, to these uh, two different members of each stakeholder group, uh, uh, this would be the, the framework and the baseline for this uh, new uh, open and uh, accountable um, selection processes the, in, in each. Yes, let me add something here. That's a, something that uh, we wanted to avoid shackling uh, very, uh, and it was um, uh, explicitly, uh, we tried to avoid the creation of appeal processes or mm -hmm. empowering too much the, the, the multi-stakeholder committee. So then, so we didn't uh, include any recommendations in the sense, what happens, if, for example, if a government Come, uh, come up and say that they have not been consulted in the election of the, uh, of, so, okay. So at this moment, I don't think that the, the LAC ITF is strong enough to deal with uh, things uh, like uh, that one. So what uh, we can do is, the, is, yeah. is uh, just to put the people in touch with the representatives of the, of the governmental constituency and say, okay, you have to, to work together in order to solve this. Uh, if the if this is a serious issue, maybe we can discuss it openly in the in the in during the LAC IGF, saying okay, there is this claim from this given constituency, private sector, technical community, or civil society, that some people say that they are not being considered or they they don't have the opportunity to participate. We can discuss it, but we didn't want to include this at at this time because uh, maybe we we will be trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist. So the so it could be over engineered in this, uh, this mechanism at this moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that the people should commit to what you are saying, Jacqueline, of course. That's, uh, it, should be, it should be added as, uh, as part of the, uh, we try to represent that. We say it open, uh, open publicly. We, we use it some words, maybe we can reinforce the idea that there, there, could, there could be any kind of discrimination on, uh, on that based on any of the elements you, uh, you listed there. And this is a very good idea also the, that's the, the, the space for analyze, uh, analyze reporting out in the LAC IGF. Yeah. Uh, we don't have answer from um, uh, we don't have answers uh, from Deidre. Deidre, do you want to speak? because I didn't understand what you were trying to say. Um, Pablo, do you want to, to, to speak to? Maybe you can elaborate a little more the, what you are saying. Okay, Deidre, first. Um, can anybody please give uh, Deidre the, 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 the power to, permission to speak? Okay, she has, done. She has permission. Okay, Deidre, go ahead, please. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, Deidre, good afternoon. Loud and clear. Um, my concern is that the proposal creates a process 
or proposes a process which assumes that there are, um, I believe it would be five stakeholder groups in existence already that recognize themselves and each other so that you can make the selection for the new committee that's proposed. But I, I don't know, Raoul just said, spoke about a problem that doesn't exist but it seems to me that that's a problem that keeps coming up. It keeps coming up with the big, the global IGF as well, about is particularly with civil society, which is very large and very diverse. How, how do you make that work fairly? I can't, I don't have anything to propose about how to do it. I can't think how, of a suggestion to make, but I'm I'm very worried that it might cause a difficulty in future. That's it. Well, thank you, Director. Um, I think that's the the uh, I, I'm optimistic that the, the this proposal uh, will work. Uh, suppose that uh, you represent an organization from civil society, but so uh, you can ask at the end of the day, say, why I'm not being proposed to serve in any committee of La Gaitiaf? But you don't know exactly uh, what to do. You can talk to some of the people that is uh, well known in the community, in your constituency, and probably uh, they can help you. But this is very informal. Now we will ask a couple of people from each uh, stakeholder group and, and we'll ask them. You have to organize your constituency. So come back and show that your procedures will be open to everybody. And, and there will be a public point of contact and the, the procedures on how you elect the, your representatives will be absolutely public. So anybody, so you will not need to be a friend of somebody. That's a, you will know the ways, the, the, the ways, the, to become involved will be public. So you will, be, you will have the possibility to be part of. If this doesn't work, I think that so we should take uh, extra measures. But at this moment, I think that I think that's, I'm very optimistic. Uh, but, it's not, but it includes all the constituencies, even for governments, because um, there is, uh, we have um, uh, many times uh, people, so during the open consultation last year, many people from governments expressed that they didn't have any idea about how to participate or how to become more involved or how to sel be selected or s contribute to the election of somebody else. Uh, so, sorry, Pablo, but... Uh, anyway. I think, pa Pablo, in relation to your question, I mean, when I read this, um, um, we, are, we never said that uh, others at the end who can contribute to the like IGF process uh, only that NRIs are the only uh, group that can contribute to the LAC IGF process. We sim simply were addressing the NRIs in particular uh, as part of one of the diversity components that we were thinking uh, at the end that should be considered uh, as part of the um, uh, uh, other focal groups that the LAC IGF process should be looking at, uh, gender SIGs, NRIs, youth IGFs, uh, sub-regional diversity, etc. So. Um, it's not that the NRIs are the only ones that can contribute to the LAC IGF process. It doesn't come out uh, in any other of the proposals. So um, if, if there is the impression that we are focusing on NRIs and their contribution to the LAC IGF, I think it, we, were, we are going to circulate the, the report uh, soon after this week. So uh, you will be able to have a look at it. And disability, as a dead risk pointing here in the chat, that's also a very a very relevant distinction to to, to take into account. You're welcome, Pablo. So, anybody else? I think that we don't have more. Um, we are twenty people online at this moment. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, not a, it's not a small number considering all the times that you have already participated in different uh, um, phases of the consultation and also considering that there are a lot of competing activities. Uh, Nigel. 
Uh, I don't know, if, uh, can we give... Uh, Nigel, yes, Nigel, you can speak. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. I hope you can hear me. Yes, loud yes. and clear. Very good, thanks. Well, I, I want to say thanks for the, the opportunity. The, this whole event, actually, it was um, enlightening to me because, I don't know, I, I missed your or answering your earlier survey this year. So I knew like IGF wanted to um, get going with some inter, what do you call it? Activities between meetings, I forget. The inter night. Intercessional. Intercessional, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, it's intercessional, but I, I don't think I had, well, I certainly didn't answer the, 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 the recent survey. I'm generally supportive of the of the proposals that I saw um, in terms of uh, getting into intersessional work and so on. I think it's very important though that we clarify what the objectives of it would be. Um, just to give you the benefit of the exp my experience from the CTU's work in in um, with the CIGF is that um, the CTU generally has been looking at um, educating and um, say building consensus among the, the, the people of the Caribbean, stakeholders in, in the Caribbean. The CTU comes out of the governmental stakeholder group, but um, we've always been open in the internet governance space to um, include all the, all the other groups. In fact, if you look at any, any CIGF, most of the attendees the great majority of the attendees are not government, are not from the government stakeholder group. So I think though, uh, if we look at, at objectives for the intersectional work, we could be looking at um, edification, you know, enlightenment on specific topical issues, and we could look at um, building consensus, basically to advise governments or any other stakeholder group that, that, that might need guidance on matters that, that arise, like, for example, data protection or child online protection or whatever is topical that um, needs to be addressed, that need, that could benefit from, from, from the attention of a, a diverse group. Um, there was another thing I wanted to say apart from the, actually, could, could you put back up the, the, um, the slide before this one, which had the proposals? Yes, of course. Two slides back, please. Yes, this one. This one. Um, well, the high level session to me is, a, is, is an ambitious one because um, I, I, I don't feel it would be effective if you don't give an idea beforehand to the high level attendees what the discussion is going to be about. It could be on a topic that is being addressed at the LAC IGF. And after hearing discussions at the LAC, LAC IGF, then you, you have the, the round table. But I think the high level attendees would need some pre-IGF pre um, what view or some pre-IGF information as to what, what, what the topics would be. Uh, the working groups, and you're talking about oh, transparency and um, making them inclusive and so on. The approach that we had taken in the past, and we were trying to get it going, but our technology limitations have been against us for the time being, is using the, using the, vec, the, um, the facility of an online discussion forum. So you don't necessarily, with, with that, you can have discussion for uh, on, on different topics, which is, which would be analogous to working groups on, the, on different topics. And with that, the participation would be inclusive because it's open, it's online, and you wouldn't necessarily need to have as much formal structure in terms of this is the chair and this is the vice chair and, 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 and that sort of thing. Um, but you can still get the benefit of inputs from a, a wide cross section of, of persons and persons can participate in more than one discussion forum 
and hence participate in the work of more than one working group um, without too much stress. So I'm, I'm suggesting that that's something that, that could be considered in, in, the, in that case. The, the link, the executive secretariat and so on, I think there is a need, at least once you start with intersectional work, you'll need to have somebody um, overseeing, making sure that things flow um, somebody kind of managing all the groups that is, that's going on and so on. So I see the, the value of that. Um, with respect to the linkages to the other regional groups and or NRIs, as the case might be, um, those linkages, I, I would say, need not be formal. Again, um, we have been working in the CIGF with um, liaisons with the various national IGFs. And we make a space in the CIGF for the national IGFs to, um, to make a report. And if we have that ongoing connection with them, they can, they can put forward um, issues or ideas or comments to anything that's going on at the, at the CIGF level. So, and at the CIGF, we, we, we don't seek to influence in any way what the national IGFs find important at their level, right? In, in any specific country, they might have interests or, or priority to any specific topic, which might not be exactly the same as what's going on at the, at the Caribbean level. But um, basically, we take their input rather than we um, advise them what to address. All right, so I'll stop there. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's the, Nigel. I think that's uh, what you describe it is exactly is, is is very similar of what I have in mind on how to implement all of these recommendations. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, you touched on many things, so I don't remember yes. all of you. But uh, <laughs> but yes, I I think that's the the it is important that that people know in advance, the, especially the people that is uh, uh, one reason because the the high level representatives of governments and other organizations don't come very often to like HF is the lack of information in advance, mm -hmm. the lack of mm -hmm. a, a clear agenda, the the expected outcomes and this kind of things. So you are right. I think that's we, we this is uh, we are in the moving in the direction to in, uh, have improvements in that sense, and uh, because uh, as, as if you combine the different uh, proposals, you see that so we are proposing to produce outcomes on a on a limited number of topics, right? Because because uh, because many people, if you see the the survey, many people still want to 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 keep the the characteristics of LAC IGF as an open place to have informal discussions uh, and exchanging information and so the mm -hmm. so, so without the pressure to produce outcomes so mm -hmm. what we yeah. are saying is the the lag igf will will uh, form some working groups to do this intersectional work that of course will be most of the work i guess will be online right yeah. as you described yeah. and so in those in those issues that's that we will have working groups that will be working for some time months i hope i hope that uh, starting next year those groups will work during the whole year um, so if if we define the topics so we are saying that we expect to produce outcomes on those limited number of topics and this is this will be in the agenda one year in advance you will know that that the the lack igf will discuss next year if we decide now to take to form some uh, working groups on given topics you will be aware so that the LAC IGF next year expect to produce some outcomes on that. Mm. Those outcomes will have the form of general principles, general approaches, guidelines, as you describe it, right? It's, yeah. I don't think they will be policy recommendations. This is something, while some people want that, because it was expressed in the survey that some people wanted to, that the the outcomes of the like IGF uh, would be in a form of uh, policy recommendations. This is not what the majority want. And, uh, right. and so I don't think, it, probably there will be an exception if everybody agrees on something. So yes, that there will be a possibility of uh, producing a, a policy recommendation. But 
that will not be the, the, the real objective. The real objective will be to produce uh, uh, agree, uh, agreements on general guidelines, uh, approaches, principles, on how to deal with different things. So I think that's uh, what you described uh, fits uh, yeah. very well. And thank you very much for All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, yes, I think that's the, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, we need to keep some. Uh, yes, the, the intersessional work, online intersessional work can always uh, encompass more um, uh, robustly the, the kind of uh, circumstances that we are going through now. So, yeah. There were extremely good comments received in the survey uh, regarding intersessional work and uh, many, many participants sharing the kind of experiences they, they have in their own sectors or in their own uh, NRIs or organizations. So um, there, are, is, there are lots of good experiences and, and good practices from where to take some of the formats of this intersessional work and the working groups forward in, in the next year. Oh, in the second semester, I would say. Okay, I don't know if there are, we, don't, we are not in a hurry, but I, I guess that uh, many people have other uh, commitments. Uh, and usually the people set- uh, One hour. Uh, <laughs> at, the, at the top of the hour, that's the new meeting. So maybe some of you have other things to do. So uh, I don't know if there are more comments. I, I, let me tell you about the next steps. Uh, we will send this, uh, this presentation and the presentation in English and Spanish. Tomorrow, after the, the, the session in Spanish, we will send the, the presentations to the, to the list, uh, the LAC-ITF list, that is Comunidad um, at LAC-ITF. Uh, so we have the opportunity to include a couple of uh, um, changes, so, so based on the feedbacks you are providing. Uh, I took note of uh, some things, Carolina, I guess, too. So we will include some, some adjustments and we will send the, the presentation to the list. We will give you a couple of days in order if, you, if anybody wants to make uh, some more comments. Uh, next step is that uh, we will uh, translate those proposals into the, the charter of LAC IGF, that is uh, what the program committee is, uh, will adopt uh, very soon. So the, uh, we expect to finalize this work uh, in one week or 10 days. And so we will not, uh, we will not ask you to, do, uh, to provide comments again about the same things. Mm -hmm. So we are now moving to the implementation phase and, uh, and so to make the concrete recommendations to the program committee. Uh, and we will be ready to support the program committee if they need anything in order to, to make it a uh, reality. Carolina? Yeah, please. <laughs> Just echoing your comments and thank you so much for your valuable contribution in this space. And um, we look forward to receiving any further comments or questions you might have in the coming days. And, but we will move fast now in the coming days uh, so that the program committee can have a, an instrument, a roadmap uh, and, and promote the changes that, we are, uh, that we've been tasked to, to recommend to, the, to this body. So, Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a nice afternoon.